Hi everyone, this is Professor Ellis with week 10 of Specialized Communications for Technology Students, English 1133, section OL96, fall 2021. I hope you're all doing well, that you're healthy, that your families are doing well too. Um, you know, before we get into uh, what we need to cover in today's class, um, now that we're well into the, the final phase of the semester, you know, our class only has a officially 15 weeks in which we meet and now we're just beginning uh, to transition from the second uh, phase of the semester into the final third phase um, so there's a lot of things that we need to cover to make sure we're staying on track and also to look ahead uh, at what's coming up in the class but before I get into that I do want to remind everyone about how to contact me um, if you have questions, if you have concerns, if you just need to run something by me, email me. Again, my email address is jls at citytech.cuny.edu. Remember, each week, unless something comes up, I have office hours on Wednesdays from 3 to 5 p.m. on Google Hangouts. The link is on our Open Lab course site or on the left-hand side in the menu or at the top of our syllabus, also on the Open Lab course site. But if you can't meet during my normal office hours, I can arrange special office hours uh, that accommodates both of our schedules. Just send me an email, let me know what your availability is like for the next few days, and then I'll try to find a time where your availability matches my availability between meetings and, and everything else I have to do uh, on campus so that we can have a time to talk and make sure that we keep you on track. Because at this point in the semester, uh, it's really important that everybody you know keep their eye on the prize. We're going to see the semester through, um, and if something does creep up that causes you to fall behind, or that you're having trouble uh, staying up with the class, or maybe catching up on some late assignments, make sure that you email me. Make sure you come to office hours. Let's talk about it. Try to strategize together how to keep you um, on track for finishing the class successfully because that's something I want for everybody in the class as long as I see that you're doing the work you're making that effort uh, we'll try to figure out you know a way to get you to where you need to be so that you can finish the class but that's something that we have to do together and it's something we have to do earlier rather than later because once we get to the end of the semester if there's like large swaths of the class uh, that you, of assignments that you haven't completed um, there's not a whole lot that anybody can do uh, short of a miracle so you do want to to really think and be honest with yourself you know what needs to be done uh, what have you already accomplished what is left to be done uh, and are you able to accomplish that on your own or are you going to need to talk to me so that we can try to figure out a plan to get you back on track because you I, you can have check-ins with me like once a week or something like that during office hours um, to, to fill me in on what you're doing uh, what you might need help with etc so there's a lot of different ways we can we can make that happen so that brings us to week 10 you know week 10 out of 15 uh, just as a quick review in last week's week 9 lecture uh, we were talking about catch up, catching up on project 1 uh, the job application portfolio and transitioning to project two. Uh, we did more research practice. I showed you more ways to use the databases through the library's website uh, and how to use some of the different citation tools. Now in support of that, uh, we did another weekly writing assignment where you uh, created a second very brief annotated bibliography of three new sources, so three different sources than you found for the week eight uh, weekly writing assignment. Um, so with each of those, I showed you different databases to use, showed you how to access the eBooks, um, so that hopefully you're looking at different resources that are available through the library, whether it be books, uh, academic journal articles, um, periodical articles from like newspapers and magazines, I had also mentioned uh, like the New York Times, which you get a free subscription with, you know, nytimes.com slash passes. You sign up with your CityTech email address. You get that for free for a year. 
uh, and also archive.org, uh, which has a lot of scanned ebooks um, that you you would normally find in a library, but um, archive.org is a digital uh, repository of our digital heritage, and that includes these scanned uh, books that are otherwise kind of difficult to get our hands on because like it's hard to go to a library right now because of the pandemic. Not all libraries have all these books. So that's why I wanted to give you lots of different um, opportunities, lots of different options for doing your research with vetted sources. That's key though. Uh, so if we rewind a little bit to the very beginning of your um, second project that you're working on right now, which is uh, the research report project. Um, I talked earlier about how to use different resources like Wikipedia, Google searches, um, as a way to, to gain some knowledge, some background information that would assist you with using actual vetted sources. Because whenever we do like a search on Google, it's going to pull up a lot of rando websites. Uh, many of which you know, we don't know who the author is. I mean, there's a lot that you can find out who the author is, um, but that requires a lot more time, a lot more work, and you have to account for all of that. There can't be givens there. Whereas when we're using these vetted sources through libraries, you know, through uh, an accredited, like the, the, the paper of record for the United States with the New York Times, for example, uh, these sources are vetted, meaning they've been evaluated, they... Um, are trustworthy sources that we can rely on and, and use in our research. Doesn't mean we always will agree with everything they say. You know, we can argue with the things that are being said in them, um, but at least these are vetted sources. And so that's what we're primarily using as any quoted material in your research uh, report. And so to give you a lot of practice, you know, with being able to quote you know, being able to do a reference citation, that's what the last two weeks of weekly writing assignments were about, and also to show me that you're actually looking at sources available through the library. And then the homework was to continue your general research into the topic that you selected. Uh, so this week, uh, week 10, uh, what we're going to talk about is the technical report organization, like what parts should you include in your research report, um, which may also be beneficial for some of you to think about like what kinds of information you need to be finding out or learning about um, for your research report. Then we will talk about the weekly writing assignment in which you're going to write a memo, roughly 250 words, uh, addressed to me, in which you describe the organization for your report. Uh, because even though we're going to go over what organization parts you can include, you get to pick and choose from those uh, what you want to put into your report. Uh, because each report, based on the subject that you select, um, may or may not need all these different parts. And the order that they come in may be different depending on the needs of what you have to say about the specific topic you've selected. Um, so that requires a little bit of work on your part to think about um, which of these parts do I need to include and what order do I put them in. And so you'll um, memorialize that by writing this memo um, and also it's a way of thinking through the problem by doing a little bit of writing about it. And then your homework is going to be to continue your research on the research report. So before we jump into the technical report organization, let's just jump over uh, to our Open Lab course site, uh, take a look at the syllabus, just again to refresh our memories about exactly what this thing is that we're, we've been talking about for a few weeks now, Project 2 Research-Based Technical Report. Now again, this is 30% of your grade and you write a 1,500 to 2,000 word research-based technical report relevant to your studies. Like it needs to be something related to what you're studying, what your specialization is. Uh, for those of you that are professional technical writing majors, uh, it should consolidate and present information about your selected topic in a manner consistent with a technical report. That's what we're gonna talk about today, like the parts that go into it. You've already read about some of this uh, that we're gonna look at together. 
Uh, so it shouldn't be anything new. Uh, it should clearly identify its purpose. For example, reviewing a design or investigating a topic. And probably many of you will be doing investigating a topic, but you could also be writing your technical report uh, as a review of a design, like a uh, review of a design of a specific type of, like say, computer architecture, microprocessor architecture. Um, you know, there's a lot of exciting things going on with microprocessors right now, everything from RISC-V uh, to different types of ARM. Um, uh, based uh, microprocessors and then of course um, the dual the ongoing duel between AMD and Intel for desktop personal computers um, so all these different things like you can spit you in this case you would choose a specific type of technological design and then review all the topics about like its history how it came to be how is it produced like how is it actually made uh, what are its applications? Like, you know, if you're, I mean, it's very different when we're talking applications of like uh, an ARM based Raspberry Pi um, processor versus like, uh, you know, the latest AMD Ryzen 7 processor uh, that goes into a personal computer. Um, you talk about the economics of whichever design you're talk, you, you've chosen to research, um, et cetera. So, I mean, both of these uh, avenues reviewing a design or investigating a topic. You have a lot of possibilities, but you get to choose which way you want to go for the, the purpose of your document. And demonstrate its stated purpose in a clear and straightforward man manner, i.e., that is, maintain a unity of thought, meaning like if you are going to be reviewing a design, that is what needs to unify everything that you're talking about in your technical report. If you're investigating a topic, everything in that technical report needs to relate to that specific topic that you're investigating, that you don't go off course and start talking about something else. All sources in your paper must be quoted and cited. Uh, there must be at least 10 cited sources uh, accessed through the library, and that includes databases, periodicals, books. But I expanded that, you know, talking with you all in lecture that uh, can also include archive.org, uh, the books that are available there, uh, as well as like the New York Times, nytimes.com. Your technical report will be written on Google Docs, which I've mentioned before. Like I, meant, I asked you to make two different Google Docs. One is your research database where you include all your quotes and all your bibliographic uh, information. Uh, your technical report will be written on Google Docs, which um, Sorry to be repeating myself, but again, you, know, you have one document for your research, one document where you're actually writing the report. Um, we're going to talk about how to share that um, and also how to link to that once you've published it online. So you get some experience with publishing something online like a website uh, and then being able to link to it. Uh, just some you know, general skills beyond the boundaries of like you know what we have to be doing in this course, but something I've built in uh, to like improve your your skill set it's things that you can you know, respond to and write about in your uh, resumes your job application letters etc and that you might make use of as you further your academic career at city tech and then once you get in the workplace um, and then all those sources that you're going to be citing those 10 cited sources uh, you'll be using um, apa uh, formatting for all that uh, so hopefully by now you've gotten a lot of experience with it i've shown you how to use some of the tools that are built into the databases to assist you with that. But again, that's not a replacement for using the guides uh, that I've linked to, such as the Purdue OWL uh, APA website uh, and other resources that um, show you how to use APA for your in-text citations, your after quotes, and then the references that will go at the end of your document uh, that correspond to everything that's quoted. So like anything that's quoted in your report needs to also have a reference in the references list at the end of your document. And all of that will be in APA format. Then just looking ahead again, you're going to have the opportunity to turn this document, this, you, it's going to be a, a quite long document, 1,500 to 2,000 words, into a shorter research presentation which is 20% of your grade. So what's cool about this is, there is there's obviously work involved, 
but the heavy lifting of the research presentation is already completed by you doing project two. What you're going to be doing is adapting what you've learned and written about in project two into your project three research presentation. Um, here I've written you will have an opportunity to turn it into a five minute oral presentation supported by a PowerPoint slideshow. Your PowerPoint slideshow should balance text with images that support what you have to say. All images in your presentation must be made, taken by you. We're going to talk a lot more about this in the weeks ahead. Um, your presentation must be recorded and hosted online for easy embedding on OpenLab slash WordPress. For example, using YouTube or Vimeo. And so um, when we get um, a few weeks from now, what I'll do is we'll talk much more about the research presentation component. Uh, and I'll give you some advice about you know, how to record it so that you're able to um, have your voice as well as the PowerPoint slides. You may choose to have uh, your image on the screen as I'm doing now, uh, or you may not. As long as like we can hear you and we see your PowerPoint presentation uh, or Google Slides presentation, like I use you know, Google Slides for our lectures each week. Either way is fine. Um, but the idea is you're going to uh, summarize what are the major points of your research report. Because obviously you can't read a 1,500 to 2,000 word paper in only five minutes. I mean, maybe if you're like an auctioneer and you spoke that fast, you could do it. Um, but you know, a normal human being can't. So what you have to do is think, how can I consolidate this much longer written document into something very brief, just to get the point across? And I think that when we get to the research presentation, uh, I'll adjust this. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a future lecture, but I may give you a, a longer window. So you like you could say like five to 10 minutes. Um, and as long as your presentation is within that window, uh, then everything will be good for that aspect of it. But that just kind of shows you what we have coming up to close out the semester, which will be the research report and your research presentation. And then, of course, the weekly writing assignments that will go in support of these projects uh, that we're continuing and will be continuing um, soon or beginning soon. All right, so that puts us in a mindset of like, you know, what's going on with this research report and you know, uh, what are the parameters for it? I've gone into more detail in earlier lectures about it, but I just want to refresh everybody's memory of the project so that now we can take a look at David McMurray's online technical writing textbook, which I've given you a link to before and asked you to read uh, the section on technical background reports. And I'll give you this link again, but you know, all of this you should have seen before. And in this section on technical background reports, uh, he lists out these typical contents and organization of technical background reports, all these different sections here. And what I want to do is talk through them with you so that you will be thinking about what parts you might want to include, the sections of your report um, because like your technical report is not going to be like one really big long paragraph or a whole bunch of paragraphs without any kind of division other than like you know the paragraph indents. Okay, that's that's wrong. You don't do that. You want to group information relating to your topic uh, around you know specific um, aspects of what it is you're researching. Um, and these sections are beneficial and useful to your reader to help understand this very large and complex problem that you're researching in a way that's easier to digest uh, so that they can understand uh, all the different components or all the different parts of its complexity uh, fit together in some meaningful way. So let's take a look at these different sections. And this is important for you to make notes on and of course refer back uh, to David McMurray's online technical writing textbook uh, to, to read over this again because this will be not only useful for you to figure out how to organize your report uh, but also how to work on this week's weekly writing assignment which is to write a memo about what 
organizational structure are you planning or envisioning? And now keep in mind with this week's weekly writing assignment, this is really just a way for you to think through this problem, to at least get something down on paper that you're going to you know, transfer into your report Google Doc that you're where you're actually writing your research report. That it doesn't mean that you're going to be wedded to what it is you say in this week's weekly writing assignment. You may find that after you get further into writing your research report that you decide, you know, I don't like this order or I want to get rid of this section or I want to put a new section in. That's totally fine. By you doing that, you're actually engaging in the writing process um, right in the middle of composition, which is totally fine. Um, it's good to strategize, think about things, put it into action. But as you you put it into action, you may have a better idea. You may see a better example. Uh, something may change in, in your thinking. And whatever it is that makes you say, you know, I don't think this is the right way. I'm going to make some change. I'm going to shift things around right now. You can do that. You don't have to go through the whole drafting process before you go back in. You can invoke the writing process at any point in the, the entire process. So don't feel that you have to continue with whatever you choose uh, and present in this week's weekly writing time. This is really just to get you thinking about it and to get you started. Um, and you can change it uh, at any point in time. You don't have to let me know about what changes you might be doing. So these are the, the typical sections that David McMurray has identified for these technical background reports. Okay, So the first is definitions. And he writes, define the potentially unfamiliar terms associated with the topic. Write extended definitions if there are key terms or if they are particularly difficult to explain. Well, these extended definitions are something that um, I also teach in my English 2575 technical writing class. Um, in a nutshell, an extended definition is one in which you don't just quote a definition from, like, say, a dictionary, but you also will explain it. You will go into more detail than what you find in a dictionary. And you might also include examples, maybe quotes from sources that show how that term gets used uh, in, in, in real writing and then explain what it means in that context. Uh, or you may come up with your own examples just so that your reader is better able to understand what those very specific terms are, uh, that jargon is that you might be using. Um, that is very discipline specific, meaning it's specific to the discipline that you're researching. Discipline meaning like the field um, that you're researching for the topic you selected. Now, I don't necessarily want you to think that you have to think of these sections in this particular order. Because like this definition section, actually I would think might serve better as a glossary, like give it the title glossary and include it toward the end of your document, maybe before uh, your references. Um, so again, th this is just like throwing ideas out there. You get to play with these sections and think what is the logical order, what is going to make the most sense and the most utility for your reader of this document. Next is causes. Explain what causes are related to the topic. For example, with the renal disease topic, and this is one of the topics he writes about um, in this section, what causes the disease. If we were to think of another example that might be more relevant to, to many of you in the class, thinking of um, what if we were to write a research report on the current video game shortage. If you're a, you know, not aware, uh, for some time now uh, during the pandemic, and, and it, it actually happened before the pandemic a little bit, uh, but it was short short lived. But now it's been under like a, a very extended amount of time, where a combination of factors have led to a 
sharp spike in the increased cost of video cards for personal computers. Um, that there, it's difficult to get one uh, unless, like, you buy a complete uh, pre-built computer. Um, and there's a, all, a lot of different factors that are involved. So if we use that as our topic, like we imagine our research report is on the video game shortage of uh, 2021, what causes might there be? And so we might go into the boom in cryptocurrency mining, where a lot of cryptocurrency miners are buying these video cards up for their business. Uh, to mine cryptocurrency to make money. Uh, how there is a supply chain problems that is difficult to not just move goods around like the finished video card from where it's built to where it's going to be sold but all the component parts that go into building the video card. Everything from the microchips to making the microchips uh, to building uh, the circuit board, everything uh, all of those supply chains that lead up to the factory are disrupted right now because of the virus, because of um, your labor shortages, of difficulty with obtaining all the different component materials, the chemicals, the elements, et cetera, that go into making this, these things. Uh, so we would want to explore all these different causes in our research report um, if that, you know, taking our example of video game, uh, the video card shortage, uh, as our, our topic. So the second one, uh, or third uh, section that he highlights, are effects. Explain what are the consequences, results, or effects associated with the topic. With the renal disease topic, what happens to people with the disease? What effects do the various treatments have? So again, looking at our other example of uh, the video card shortage, um, we, can, we want to explain consequences, results, or effects associated with the topic. So there's a shortage of these cards, so it's leading to scarcity, um, not just for personal computer users, but also other people that might be using the video cards um, one of the you know, big buyers of video cards now are cryptocurrency miners, but one of the things that may get left out of this conversation are uh, the use of video cards now in a lot of different types of research. Everything from medical research uh, to physics research, chemistry research, biology research, uh, because video cards, the way that they're, they compute things, the way that they um, are able to do calculations Special, you know, specialized calculations much more quickly and efficiently than a normal uh, CPU in a computer does um, lends them toward being very useful outside of just playing video games or being able to display video from your computer on a monitor. That they can in fact be used and repurposed um, in all these other circumstances um, to, to help with research. And if you can imagine that there's a scarcity of these cards, what effect might that have on the research that is supported by these types of cards being used in not just individual computers, but in special computing clusters that may have like, you know, a hundred video cards, a thousand video cards, etc. cetera. Um, we could also talk about the effects of um, what links people might go to, to try to obtain these video cards, like the long lines that they have or, or did have before they changed to a lottery system at Micro Center, uh, for example, uh, or how people are expectantly waiting for drops uh, at Best Buy or other um, uh, electronic stores. Uh, so you want to explore what are all these different consequences, results, or effects that are related to the topic that you selected. Types. Discuss the different types or categories associated with the topic. For example, are there different types of renal disease? Are there different categories of treatment? So here, if we return to our example of uh, the video card shortage, uh, what we want to discuss are the different types of video cards that are available in the market. Those that are made by AMD, those that are made by NVIDIA, uh, how there are um, 
other companies beginning to uh, re-enter the, the, the video card market like Intel um, with their offerings. Um, so we wanted to discuss those different types. Maybe the, you know, the, and the types can actually be related to effects and thinking about you know, are the effects uh, you know, happening to all the different types equally or are there differences? So like for example, uh, with a video card shortage, you know, the effects are different for AMD versus NVIDIA that uh, AMD cards, it seems by and large, uh, especially for the lower end cards, have price spikes that are much higher than the lower end cards for NVIDIA. And that's for a number of different reasons, for like production, um, how you know, they're able to introduce enough cards into a given market, uh, etc. Also, with types, you could discuss like the different um, types uh, that are uh, of the shortage itself. Thinking about like how it's being um, addressed. Like you, know, on the one hand, there are companies like you know Newegg and Micro Center that are offering not just um, a lottery type systems to make cards available, but also doing different kinds of bundles to make them available. Uh, we could also talk about um, the way that like computer manufacturers are you know, making cards, you know, video cards available in pre-built systems rather than selling them individually, like as an add-on or an upgrade component. Um, so types can involve a lot of different aspects, the different types uh, of the different, you might say, characteristics, aspects, um, component uh, issues that are related to the topic that you've selected. So be thinking of types, different types. Historical background. Discuss relevant history related to the topic. Discuss people, events, past theories related to the topic. And so this is some of the work that you should have already, you've been doing these past couple of weeks um, that help you get a better understanding of the topic at hand, like you, know, how did this topic come to be? Um, so, the example of uh, the video card shortage, we want to talk about the historical background of the of video of the video card market. We may not, I mean, we could address a little bit about how video cards came to be, the different technologies, the standards that were used, like CGA, EVGA, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, EGA, VGA, um, etc., up to the most recent stuff of you know, super high uh, definition re resolution video cards, but also talk about like the different standards that are involved in uh, or that govern video cards, um, the different technologies for video cards to interconnect with the computer, um, you know, starting like um, ISA slots to um, Visa local bus, to PCI, to AGP, to um, uh, PCIe. Uh, so you have this progression of technologies that are involved in the way that video cards are able to interface with the computer across some kind of bus that allows it to communicate with the CPU and, and use the memory available in um, the computer system. Um, could talk about different players that are involved. You know, people that that um, did different types of innovation, invention, etc., uh, for video cards or whatever topic it is that you selected. You know, people, events, past theories, or maybe past special events or past standards. But anything that shows that historical progression, how things came to be the way they are now. And so, when we're talking about organization, this historical background might go very close up toward the beginning of your uh, research report, uh, probably right after a, a section of introduction, which as you see here, he doesn't give introduction, but I think that's kind of a given. An introduction section to your research report is going to introduce the topic, give a roadmap for what it is you're going to discuss, um, essentially let your reader know what to expect in your research report. After that, a historical background section, I think would be really spot on because then that allows the reader then to better understand 
how things came to be the way that they are now that you're going to be discussing in relation to your topic. This next section, processes. Discuss mechanical, natural, human control processes related to the topic. Explain step by step how the process occurs. For example, what are the phases of the renal disease cycle? What typically happens to a person with a specific form of the disease? So with our example, we might think of the processes of how video cards are manufactured, uh, processes around how uh, video cards are not, not just uh, distributed, the supply chain for distributing the production of video cards to end, um, to end buyers, but also supply chain um, issues of how materials make their way to manufacturers to actually build the video cards. So maybe talk about that whole long process from start to finish of manufacturing to distribution. So anything that involves processes are usually you know, very important to talk about you know, in a technical report. Descriptions. Provide information on the physical details of things related to the topic. Provide information about size, shape, color, weight, and so on. For the engineering-oriented report, this would mean size, power requirements, and other such details about the treatment technologies. So these types of descriptions would be uh, you writing about the specific thing or things relating to the topic of your research report. So if we're talking about video card shortage, well, the description should have something about the different types of video cards that are available today. Um, mainly focusing you know, on AMD and NVIDIA's offerings, but discussing like you know, how, what is the, the naming conventions for the different video cards, what are their technical capabilities, what are their power requirements, uh, what are um, their uh, um, thermal characteristics, uh, all this kind of stuff that allows your reader to better understand you know, what are these things that you're actually talking about. Comparisons. Compare the topic or some aspect of it to something similar or something familiar. With the renal disease example, you could compare renal disease to some other disease, the treatment to some treatment, the functions of the kidney to something familiar, an analogy, or even the treatment to something familiar, for example, the filter system for a swimming pool. Similarly, when we're thinking of um, the video card shortage, you could relate this uh, to other types of supply and demand problems, either looking historically or other things that are taking place now, um, with other types of shortages that are, that are occurring uh, in response to uh, the global pandemic, uh, issues with the supply chain disruption, etc. As you probably have heard in the news about like um, reports that people should be buying their Christmas gifts early, for example, to make sure that they have gifts in hand rather than waiting to the last minute because some goods may be in short supply. Uh, but you could also simply talk about how um, even on like a local level, how a shortage like at uh, a local grocery store or a local store that you know, gets a particular type of good that people need if for some reason like a truck breaks down and is able to deliver this particular good on a given day uh, to supply that store for that week and all of the customers that come in looking for that good obviously this is going to run into problems uh, for those people that want to buy it but also opportunities for others around them like say like you know the um, the fruit stand on the corner that may be selling or may have access to that same good and notices that well suddenly everybody wants it there's more demand so they up the price uh, you just simple supply and demand you know um, we're talking Adam Smith uh, economic stuff um, so you could use these types of analogies comparisons as a way to help your reader better understand um, what's going on in the in the very technical uh, example that you're discussing for your technical report. Okay, we just got a few more to work through. Okay, so hang in there. Applications. 
Explore how some aspect of your topic can be used or applied. If it's some new technology, what are its applications? Um, so in general, like if you're writing a technical report on like say NVIDIA video cards, well, you'd want to talk about the different applications of, of them. Not, you know, not just for personal computer desktop display, but for playing video games, uh, for doing um, um, different kinds of calculation um, dependent visualizations of doing everything from machine learning to um, AI type work um, every you know thinking of like upscaling videos and images uh, is becoming a very popular thing to use high-end video cards for now uh, but then also as I mentioned earlier for like mining cryptocurrency uh, for doing different types of research, you know, biomedical research, um, chemistry research, physics research, you know, anything that, that needs something that can do lots of calculations uh, very quickly. Um, but you could also think of like um, maybe applications in terms of maybe responses, and this kind of relates to the, the uh, topic a couple down, like economic considerations. Um, of like you know, different ways to ameliorate or resolve or lessen the impact of the video card shortage. You know about like implementing um, uh, a ration system, a lottery system. Um, you know, different ways to think through the problem to make things more uh, egalitarian or equal. Uh, so there's different ways you can think of applications in this regard, depending on the topic that, that you've selected. Uh, advantages and disadvantages. Discuss the advantages or disadvantages of one or more aspects of your topic. In the renal disease topic, for example, what are the advantages of one treatment over another? Well, if we're thinking about the video card shortage as a topic, um, there are certain advantages for those that are manufacturing and those that are middlemen selling uh, video cards, whether it be legitimate businesses or scalpers. There's obviously uh, making money is an advantage for these individuals and companies. Um, disadvantages are that it's costing end users a lot more money uh, to, uh, to purchase these, these goods. Um, some research might, might might not be done or may take longer to complete because it's taking more of like say a research grant um, you're not able to buy as many video cards now your money doesn't go as far uh, to purchase these video cards um, disadvantages of like cryptocurrency mining is that you know it's wrecking the environment because you're using a lot more power and electricity to do um, uh, Proof of proof of effort work uh, on the blockchain for whichever cryptocurrency you happen to be using, which most of them are doing that now, um, which you know is causing other problems that you know cascade into like you know, causing people's health to be worse, causing global warming, um, putting strains on already overburdened uh, electrical grids, etc. Now also elect electricity theft in some places uh, so a lot of bad stuff so I mean you get to discuss all those um, advantages and disadvantages of the topic that you select now somewhat related to that and this is where I think you can begin seeing how some of these sections can overlap and so you might combine some of them depending on your needs and your topic economic considerations Discuss the costs of one or more aspects associated with your topic. How much does treatment for renal disease cost? How much does the equipment and personnel cost? So with our video card shortage example, we can think of like, you know, how, how much do video cards cost now? What is the uh, manufacturer's suggested retail price versus the uh, real price whenever you look on uh, different retail websites, if you look on eBay, if you look on Craigslist, etc. Um, also kind of bundled into economic considerations as far as the video car shortage issue is concerned are 
uh, tariffs that were put in place a couple of years ago uh, that are raising the price of goods that are electronics goods that are produced in China uh, where most video cards are, are manufactured. So this is another economic consideration to, to take into account. Social, political, legal, ethical implications. Explore the implications or impact of your topic or some aspect of it in relation to social, political, legal, or ethical concerns. The renal disease example doesn't lend itself much to this area, but imagine the possibilities with a topic like cryogenics, suspended animation of human beings. Uh, often new technologies have profound impact in these areas. Well, even for his example of um, renal disease, you know, one of the ethical issues, particularly with the heavy reliance on electrical equipment, computer-based equipment to provide uh, medication and monitoring of patients, uh, there are ethical considerations in the way the code is made that operate these machines. Because you can imagine a machine that is going to decide whether someone like lives or dies um, the code needs to be like rock solid. It needs to be evaluated. It needs to be like you know, proven uh, to to work correctly the way that it's intended. Uh, there's a long history in which your medical equipment um, that relies on computers or some sort of computing uh, aspect uh, for its operation uh, have done have been done in a half-ass way and ended up either people were maimed, people died. Uh, so, I mean, there, there are some legal and ethical issues involving medical technology. Uh, the same is true if we think of, like, you know, the video car shortage. What are the ethical implications of, like, scalpers, for example, that are trying to make a buck on this, but are, you know, raising the prices of video cards for, for those people that actually want to buy them? Um, what are the ethical implications for the video card manufacturers that are inflating the prices of their video cards? Um, so I mean the, these are obviously aspects to consider and if we think of like social issues with the video car shortage um, I'm, I'm sure that it's having an impact on decisions made by video game manufacturers because if they know that not everybody is able to get like a triple A level um, capable video card they're probably going to make different decisions about where they adjust their resources in terms of putting out new video games so that they're able to reach a lar as large a market as possible with a you know, visually impressive enough uh, video game uh, that people want to play and want to either buy or, or um, buy things in the game. So different ways you can think of social, political, legal, ethical implications. And you're thinking of like political, we have the tariff. And like, why is the tariff there? You know, the tariffs are paid by the people that buy the goods. They're not paid by the, co the country that's actually producing the goods. So if, if there's an overwhelming demand for a good from you know, a foreign country, guess who's paying that tariff? Well, it's not China. They just, those, they're jacking the prices up by however much the tariff is and then it's us that want to buy the things, the video cards, for example, that are paying for the tariff. Problems, questions. What problems or questions are there associated with your report topic or some aspect of it? Now, this is where you think of it not exactly like troubleshooting, but what are some of the problems uh, that are related to the topic that you're researching? Um, they could be things beyond you the scope of your report but that you think are worth mentioning for uh, readers of your report to learn more about or to do their own research in to to add to discourse one of the things i haven't talked about in our class is this term discourse discourse are the large conversations that we have about different things um, it could be that the discourse within a field of study so like um, with uh, the discourse around video cards, the discourse around renal disease, the discourse around medical technology, the discourse around personal computers. And these things overlap in different ways, but there are specific conversations in each of these particular topics, and each of those constitute a discourse. 
So with whatever topic you selected for your, your research report, you, what kinds of problems are there that you're not act, you didn't really address in the rest of your report that are worth discussing? Um, what questions might um, be left unanswered that uh, you want to you know, share with your reader, but you, you won't actually be answering as a part of your research report? But now, that being said, you can see that the final section, Solutions Answers. What solutions or answers can you offer on those problems or questions raised by your topic or some aspect of it? And it's these two sections here that I think make for really strong conclusions uh, to your research report. Now, you can talk about these things you know, in different um, sections that we've already talked about. But they're also very useful for you to conclude on because your conclusion shouldn't be a regurgitation of everything that you've already talked about. The conclusion needs to be looking ahead. It needs to be uh, drawing up the threads of everything you've discussed already in your research report. And so concluding with some problems and questions and then providing some solutions and answers to those things, either based on your research or perhaps some of your own unique ideas that you might have about how to solve some of those problems or questions based on what you know, your expertise in your field, etc. Um, but I think that combining these two things, problems, questions, with solutions, answers, is a good way to close out your, your research report. Um, and so like with our video card shortage example, you know, what kind of solutions are there? We gotta, you know, we could talk about eliminating the tariff, fixing the supply chain, both on the side of production as well as on the side of distribution, um, providing uh, a more equal way to, for buyers to get video cards so that, you know, one, like say crypto miner doesn't buy all the cards for a geographic area, instead that there is like, you know, one person, uh, one address is allowed to get one video card. Uh, that way there's a more equal distribution. Uh, and also to avoid like, you know, the problem with scalpers where one person may buy, you know, several video cards and only needing one just for the purpose of like reselling the rest to either reduce the cost of theirs or to make a profit. Um, so there's lots of different solutions we can think of to solve some of these problems that we're seeing around the video card sh shortage problem if we were to use that as the topic of our research report. Now you can have other sections beyond this um, and you can also look at the examples that David McMurray offers in his technical, his online technical writing textbook. But these should give you an idea of what kinds of sections uh, you might want to aim for. And so for your weekly writing assignment, what I want you to do is write a memo of roughly 250 words. You know, begin with your memo block at the top uh, to Professor Ellis from your name, uh, date, subject. The subject can be uh, research report organization or research report table of contents, right? They're kind of the same thing. And then writing in complete sentences, about 250 words, uh, tell me, you know, say again, like, what is your topic? And then talk through what sections and what order you want to include in your research report. Uh, you might even talk a little bit about some of the things you might discuss in each of those sections. So like each sentence might be one specific section and you can say a little bit about what types of things relating to your topic you would discuss. So like, you know, for descriptions, you know, what would you, what would you describe? You know, what specific things would you want to describe relating to your topic? Comparisons, what kinds of things would you compare with what topic you selected? What applications? You could like maybe list off a couple of things uh, that are applications for the technology or process that you're writing about uh, in your research paper. So again, about 250 words, you know, write that someplace safe, Google Docs, whatever word processor you like, and then just copy and paste that into this week's weekly writing um, assignment blog post in a comment. So click on 
the weekly writing assignment week 10 scroll to the bottom you're going to see the comment box copy and paste your work there click post comment wait a second and you will see it like kind of merge with the page and then you'll know that your work has been accepted And then with your homework, you need to continue your research for the research uh, project. If someone is, is, is wanting to change their topic or is having some trouble uh, picking the topic you, if, because you're trying to catch up on things in the class like the job application portfolio, again, remember, get the job application portfolio done, then switch gears over to this. You can talk with me about it. We can brainstorm some ideas. Just let me know. Um, and how do you do that? Remember, you can email me, jls at citytech.cuny.edu. Um, also, we can talk during office hours, Wednesdays, 3 to 5 p.m. or by appointment. Um, keep that in mind. I don't, I don't want anybody suffering in silence in the class. I think some of you, you did that earlier on. You don't have to do that. I'm here to help you. I want to make sure everybody succeed, succeeds in the class. Uh, but you need to involve me as much as you can. Uh, by email, by office hours, um, because with an asynchronous class, this is these are the media that we use um, to stay in touch. Um, so I'll get this lecture posted and the weekly writing assignment on Wednesday. Um, if you're catching up on previous work, make sure you send me an email to let me know that you've turned it in, so I'll go back and check it off for you. Uh, for some of you that turned in Project 1, don't worry, I'm going to get those grades posted soon. Um, but just the fact that you've turned those in, that is a great first step. Uh, I know some folks in the class have like been doing really great work. I'm, I'm glad of that. And I know some of you are wanting to do good work. You're wanting to catch up. So don't give up. Keep it. Keep working at it. And keep me in the loop uh, when you get those things turned in. Okay? So good luck with everything. Um, stay healthy. Uh, stay safe. You know, Take care of those around you. Um, mask up when you're around lots of people, maintain social distance, because even if you're vaccinated, remember you can still catch uh, the virus again, you can spread it to other people, maybe some people that haven't been vaccinated. Um, so I mean, we have to do everything we can, not just to protect ourselves, but protect everybody around us, okay? So good luck, and I'll talk with you all again real soon.